y'all got to listen. Y'all going to have to preach me because I'm scared to death. I shouldn't be on this platform. And I told Pastor Rod not to come in. I said, you see, stay back in your office. I'm going to explain why. Y'all could have a seat. Man, I'm going to tell you something. The power of God's in this place. I've been traveling this weekend and I've been watching. And I have brought a deliverance word to this house. And as I was praying, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, every person that walked into that room, listen, y'all done shouted. I watched you. Y'all have shouted. Y'all have bucked. Y'all have fallen to the flow. And you're still yelling at your spouse. So what we're going to do is we're going to get to the heart issue. Because what happens is whenever you allow yourself to continue to go to conference after conference and you never allow God to get to your core, we change in the outside, honey. Your body looks snatched. Like you look snatched. You drinking greens and eating peanuts and you want a Big Mac. But you ain't dealing with the thing right here. That thing right here that keeps you out of depression. That thing right here that keeps you married. That thing right here that keeps you out of bankruptcy. Long gone are the days when we come to conferences and walk out the same way we walked in. I was here 25 years ago and I was Pastor Rod's worst nightmare. And I'm not even kidding. When he walked in the office back there to talk to me, he said, you drove me crazy. And I said, I know you're punking me right now. You're punking me. You're going to walk out there and punk me straight out of your pulpit. Let me tell you why. I was raised UPC, United Pentecostal. And I was raised in a religion where they said, you're going to get divorced. You're going to go to hell on a slip and slide. Well, I was helping God by the time I was 14. I was already mad at the saints. My mom and daddy were preachers. And every single Sunday, I would remember watching as the people were standing up there singing, he's a good, good father. That's who he is. That's who he is. That's who he is. And I remember thinking, dude, I don't want to go to heaven with you. Like if you, who I got to be doormates with, I don't want to go with you. Because I don't believe you. And I remember at that young age, remembering all the religion. It was all about what we can't do. And I remember every time I would watch my mother, she would walk in church and she'd be like, yeah, ah, thank you. And I'd be watching her thinking, God, you are so mean. My mom has got to beg and cry and snot and walk out with a red nose to church every Sunday. She got to beg you. I ain't begging you for nothing. But see, this is what religion does to us. It allows us to go and play church. And this right here is an atmosphere of healing. You better get your healing. Because you listen, God ain't going to force you to do nothing. You want to stay tore up? Fine. But it's your choice to say, God, I am 40 years old. I am mad at you because you said by prophetess Medina Pullins when I was 20 that I was going to have a husband and two kids and I am 40 years old and I ain't got no kids and I ain't got you mad at God because he did not, nobody told you to take time with Jerry for 10 years. You over here trying to get Jerry. Jerry, he's my project. God done showed you a million red flags, but oh no, he my, oh, I can't let go. Sometimes you gotta let somebody be somebody else's headache. What y'all doing in the back? I'm telling y'all something. I got deliverance in this house. When I tell you, you can be mad for a second, but you ain't gonna be mad for long. Because I'm gonna tell you something, something happens when you realize that the expectations you had for your life was this big. 
You wanted God to give you a church like Pastor Rod Parsley. You wanted God to give you a church like Brandy Clack. You wanted God to give you a church like Pitchtree. You're looking at all of these people. You ain't got a clue who you're supposed to be. We all trying to be the same person. We don't need another T.D. Jakes. We don't need another Rod Parsley. We need you to get your voice. The world needs you. That's why you're here. The world needs your fingerprint. And guess what? A man ain't going to give it to you. The one up here is going to give it to you. I remember basically getting kicked out of here. I ain't lying. I was in Pastor Rod's executive office. My name was on that screen every Sunday. Kim Jones to the executive office. I'd be like, it was either Mama Parsley or Pastor Rod. And I'd walk back there and they'd say, listen, I saw you looking at that boy on that piano. Girl, you done been married twice. See, I didn't tell y'all that because the first one really didn't count. Because I got married when I was 17 running from religion, so I blame it on religion. And if I passed that dude on the street, I wouldn't even know what he looked like, so he don't count. <laughs> but God told me it counted. He said, oh yeah, baby girl, it counts, and you're gonna talk about it. Because the body of Christ needs to understand that I'm a God of redemption. The body of Christ needs to get up off of their own condemnation and the shame that they're holding against themselves and begin to lay it at the altar and really believe what they praise before every Sunday, which I'm a good father and I care for them and they matter. They matter. You matter. That's why the enemy's been trying to take you out since you were five. Because he knew one day you were going to get in dominion. This is called legacy. You know what this is called? I think it's an I'm so honored that I got to walk on this platform because I'm the last one that deserves to be here. But God, trust me. Because something about walking through hell, you don't care what nobody thinks. You just want Jesus. You want Jesus. You don't care about the paycheck. You don't care about what you wear. You just want Jesus. And what's happening in this camp meeting, God showed me was he was shifting perspective. Some of y'all been wanting, y'all go put up a like on Facebook. You put up a status. You done high-fiving yourself. You done ran around your house because you blessed yourself for that thing. You're like, yes, girl, that was powerful. It's going to get a ton of likes and you don't get one. (laughs) And so what happens is you begin to think that you're not used of God because you need people's accolades and not God's. Because can I tell you hurt people, they're not gonna like your post because then it makes them, exposes them, but you might've called someone to not commit suicide because you obeyed God and you didn't care what people thought about you. We gotta quit caring what people think about us. Social media is a beast. It's a good beast for me because I started using it and I was really preaching to myself and didn't even know people were watching. But I was sitting when God takes you through a storm, baby. Sometimes he'll give you just what you want to show you it ain't what you need. And sometimes God will break your spirit to save your soul. Sometimes rejection is not necessarily someone wanting out of your life, but somebody that God needed out of your future. And that even includes church folk. And I remember... After I got married, Pastor Rod told me, he said, you jumping out of the fire into the frying pan. I was like, bye, Felicia. (laughs) Got my U-Haul and moved back to my mom and daddy's. Married that joker. Stay with him longer than I should. Because of Pastor Rod. Because I didn't want Pastor Rod to say, I told you. (laughs) But if I had to go back, I'll never forget in 2006. When I found myself in a fetal position, running for my life, all the storms I had created, I was a good nay-nayer on the bars. Preacher's kid gone crazy. 
because I thought God was a mean God. Because I would come to all these conferences and look around and think I'm not even worthy to be here. I would look at people my own age, and this is how social, social media will get you. Because it'll have somebody on there the same age as you that's already wrote 10 books. They probably got five pages in each book, but they got 10. <laughs> and they'll make sure, the enemy will make sure you see it. You'll have that woman on there that just had triplets. She just birthed them babies out, and five minutes later, she's in a two-piece. And you're still trying to get your bag boobs off of your 21-year-old baby. And all of a sudden, what's happening is you're beginning to, y'all, y'all, that bag boobs ain't bad. And all of a sudden, what's happening is you're becoming high, a hostage because you're looking horizontal instead of vertical. Instead of realizing that God, what you got on the inside of me, they ain't nobody else can do it. Hey, there's a reason why people with the worst past create the best futures. There's a reason why that people go through hell, they come out on fire. Because when you're down to nothing, God's up to something. When you're down to nothing, honey. All of a sudden what you do is you begin to look at people instead of God. They, they ain't giving you what you need. They're not validating you. And so you're looking and you're angry at God for people. And now God's over here trying to bring you back up because he said, this is better than life college. That fetal position you're in right there, I was screaming out to God, God, if you could go put the stars on the moon and make billions, of, you can heal my marriage. 17 years and two sons and I need my husband. And God spoke to me. He says, you never one time asked me if that was your spouse. And now you want me to talk to somebody that ain't talked to me in years. He said, either you can get up, dust yourself off and get better and not bitter. Or you can lay right there and be pitiful. It's your choice. I remember laying there crying. <laughs> you ain't me. And he's like, he's through. And he said, and P.S., you got to go get a job. I said, I got to go get a job? You took my Mercedes away? I'm driving a hoopty. That blows up on me every day. It's a 300 Chrysler. It's a knockoff Bentley. And now you're going to make me go get a job? I was in special ed my whole life. All I'm gonna be able to do is retail because I can't go to no law firm. They ain't gonna hire me. And he said, go to Belk. I said, I ain't going to Belk. That is Kmart on crack. <laughs> he said, you gotta trust me with the process. See, this is what we do. We don't trust God with the process. We're mad at God because we lost a six-figure job, not knowing that what God does is he takes you all the way to somewhere because he needs you to be there for where that person's going to come meet you at that CVS line where you're making $9 an hour. God's going to allow a cosmic connection and that person is going to see you and all of a sudden, all from the back of the line to the front of the line, all from the, oh, that's how my God rolls. I got promoted to Bloomingdale's. So I was like, I can't afford no underwear, but I'm going to Bloomy. I'll never forget it. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Because I remember I couldn't do makeup. I was UPC. I couldn't wear makeup. Women can't wear makeup. And I told God, he said, go Google it. Google's a woman. They got all the answers. <laughs> and I remember as I'm doing that person's makeup, I'm sitting in that chair. I didn't like women at all. I just was one of those. Isn't it funny? That's what I do now. I preach to lots of women and I love their lights out. But I would sit there and I'd be doing makeup and I didn't know how to do makeup. Their eyebrows were on fleek up to their hairline. <laughs> but boy, I'd be telling them, girl, you're so naturally beautiful. You don't even need no makeup. <laughs> I, was, I was just telling them, I was getting them ready because it looked awful. <laughs> but what I was realizing was the depression was ripping off my body. All of a sudden, I was starting to love people. All of a sudden, healing was taking place. As every person that I did one more face to, all of a sudden, I was beginning to help someone out of their hole. And as I was helping them, I was getting free. See, that's why the enemy puts you into isolation. 
Because as long as you're isolated, as long as you're having a pity party, nobody can talk to you and show you how amazing you are. All of a sudden I go to Bloomingdale's. I'm like, yeah, I got this. I forgot I had to drive an hour. And if I went over 30 miles, that hoopty was going to blow up. 75, I'd be driving home. And all of a sudden I would see smoke coming up out of my car. One day I'm driving, I heard the Lord say, I need you to go buy every preaching CD that you can find. I said, come on, God, I ain't never listened to no preaching CDs. I ain't, I ain't about that junk. He said, go get every preaching CD you can find. He said, because I'm preparing you for where I'm about to take you. Now, I never dreamed in a million years that me with two divorces, me married twice, was going to be able to be used of God all over the world. I never knew that because by the religious standpoints, they're like, you're going to hell. And I, I, I literally thought as I was getting divorced the second time, I was like, you better grease that thing down because here I come. <laughs> and then I remember driving to work one day and I was sitting in that car, man, I was feeling free. God wasn't in there doing, no, he wasn't. I was beginning to open my mouth and say something to myself. I was beginning to realize that it was class participation. It was more than just coming to a conference and laying out on the floor. It was about saying, God, I am broken before you. I don't care if everybody sees my eyelashes down on my cheek because they fell. I ain't leaving this place until you heal me. That's where you got to be. You got to get raw. How can God heal you if you won't even be honest with yourself? We so used to faking it till we make it. We hate making it. We look good on the outside. We got Louboutins and Gucci and we got the perfect weave and we got the now the feather eyelash. They just keep on making us fake. But our insides, that thing, you know, let me tell you how you know if your insides are bad. If one day you're up and one day you're down. If one day you on social media said, I'm about to do a Facebook purge. <laughs> if you don't hear from me again, you've been deleted. Cause I'm tired of the drama. You are the drama. <laughs> I remember I would turn on TD Jakes, Rob Parsley, Paula White, I was trying to figure out where I fit. I turn on T.D. Jakes. I'm driving. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I go pause. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Play. He's gonna move for you. He's gonna move. Pause. He's gonna move for you. God was like, what are you doing? He said, I needed you to get the word down in you because you are getting life college right now. Because when I opened the doors over your life, what you thought the seasons were being stuck was the seasons I was preparing you for. But I need you to know how to say something. I need you to have something to say more than just a hoop. I started getting that word down on the inside of me, man. I was floating through Bloomingdale's. One day I'm driving home and I see smoke coming out of my car. I think Broadway. God, you think of everything. You've given me my own smoke machine. I took my phone out and I held it right here. I said, hello, awesome people. Are you sitting on the side of the road broke down right now, honey? All the cars passing you on 75. Oh, you want to give up? Oh, you ain't giving up. You getting up, you getting up. Upload. I said, devil. Every time you got me sitting on the side of the road, I'm going to do a video. He says, so? He had me sitting on the side of the road for five days. I did a video for five days about come five. This is how my God rolls when you get ready. On day five, all of a sudden, all these rappers were sharing my video. Man, this is some good. I'm like, yes! I didn't say it. Y'all like. All of a sudden, I was getting a million subscribers. I'm like, oh my God, I'm being punked. Everything's punk in my life. Because I really am like, God, you are really awesome. Because I don't, I pinch myself every day of my life. And I hear, all of a sudden I started getting phone calls. Can you come preach? I'm like, 
you know I've been divorced. They said, girl, yeah, we, done, we, already, we already Googled you. All of a sudden, I was starting to get to go preach. I was like, yes, I get to quit blowing big tails. I heard God say, oh, no, you don't. Those who are faithful in the little, I'll reward you with much. See, what happens is we jump ahead of God. When we get a little bit of a break, somebody lets us preach at their church. All of a sudden, we leave their church and go start our own church. All of a sudden, we're over here saying, when I get a break, when I get... No, you got to start working towards it before you get there. All of a sudden, I started getting a lot of invitations. I started getting, I finally one day went to the office. I was already there a year after I was preaching. I went over to the HR department and said, I need off again. I got another preaching engagement. They said, girl, that's all right. You go. We're, we're supporting you. I said, no! God said, it ain't time, Kimberly. Sit still. For two more years, I sat there. Two more years, I would get up and go pray on my prayer line. Two more years, I would sit and the world was being, I mean, the world was following me and I, I would be sitting there doing makeup and people would come in and go, oh my God, you're that girl. And I'd be like, and God said, until you get rid of your pride, until you don't care who sees you raking the, the, the dirt off the floor. I decided I was gonna open me a Twitter. 2009, I said, Kimberly Jones, it's taken. Kimberly Ann Jones, it's taken. Finally, Twitter said, how about Real Talk Kim? God was starting to set me up, see? And I wouldn't have to do nothing. I got on there, and that first day I had 23 followers. I was like, yes, won't it? <laughs> By five o'clock, they all quit following me. I said, what did I do wrong? I didn't even say nothing. And God said, when you stop looking at the likes and you stop looking at affirmation coming from people until you get to a place where you don't care if nobody follows you, until you get to a place where it's all about me and not about you, because where I'm taking you, it is walking into a season and everybody in this building needs to see this. When you are walking into a season where restitution is taking place in your life and God ain't using people to get you there because God wants the glory for your story. God ain't forgot about you. That's why you're sitting in this place. We walk around all the time. There's some of you in here that ran your, your husband off. You have five of them. And now you're busy telling yourself, I don't need no man. And you ain't got one. Because really in reality, what the enemy's doing is he's trying to tell you that you're an idiot, you're a fool, and that nobody will ever love you. That is all a lie from the pit of hell. Because my God says in, in, in Ephesians 3.20 that he's gonna do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. My God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to bless you and not harm you, give you a future and a hope. He said, blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the seat of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, for his delight is in the law of the Lord. And when he meditates day and night, he is like a tree planted by the rivers of the, when you stop allowing stuff to mess you up. When you get to that place where you don't let life beat you up anymore. When you get to that place where you can walk in this place and say, I'm walking in here and I'm about to make me some relationships. I'm about to get me some men and women of God and I ain't scared to tell them, I need you to pray for me. I'm going through hell right now. When you get to that place where you expose your heart. Sometimes God will let you hit rock bottom so you find out who the rock is at the bottom. And that's for some of you in this room today. God brought you here. And this session is a session where I'm telling you something. If you can get to a place that you totally surrender to God and say, God, I don't care. Y'all, when I tell you, people ask me all the time, how do you get rid of the shame? If anybody should be so ashamed, it's me. I said, talk about it. The devil can't get you with what you talk about. But we won't even come to the altar because we're afraid of what people are going to say about us. We're afraid that they're going to see that we don't really have it together. Look at your neighbor right now. They ain't got it together. We all are going through things in our lives 
And the prophetic is trying to flow in our midst, but because of the pride that we carry, God can't even break us down to a place where we can really hear him for ourselves. That's why we're chasing after all these prophets. Because you don't spend time with God. Pastors aren't spending time with God anymore. We're going on YouTube and trying to find a, find a sermon. Having affairs and losing our whole families. Because we hate spending time with God and we don't know who God is for ourselves. When is the cycle going to end? When we can have revival back in this world, when we can get back to the basics. When you can realize that you can prophesy in CVS. When you can look at, oh no, but we want that platform. I preach in 10, I preached to 10 people about two weeks ago. I walked up in there and preached. There was a thousand in there. Because you know what? God could use anybody. When you get to that place where you realize that you ain't no better than nobody else and God can use anybody, at that point, you will finally surrender your life to him and say, God, I'm going on a journey with you and I'm not leaving this room until you heal me. Yes, 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 yes. Marriages, y'all sleeping back to back. And preaching every Sunday. You ain't been with your wife in forever. You've been with your husband in forever. And preaching and walking up in the church acting like you've got it all together. Enemies got you. And you better get that heart right. Because I'm telling you something. You're going to hit rock bottom. And what you're allowing to interfere in your life right now and your calling is not worth it. That woman that you're talking to that ain't your wife is not worth it. That man that you're talking to that ain't your husband is not worth it. It is a ploy from the enemy because what is inside of you is so large and so magnificent that the enemy is trying to distract you and take you off kilter because he doesn't want you to get there because he can't make you do anything, but he can distract you. He can distract you. And he always gets into the areas of your life that you have not taken care of. That molestation that happened when you were four. Now you can't let nobody love you, woman of God. Making him pay for something that he didn't even do to you. But the enemy knows that if you ever get a man covering you and loving you into submission. Oh, oh, white, 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 white mama Medina. When you got a good man covering you, honey, you open your mouth and lo, all of a sudden things are flowing out of you because, oh, but you can't let nobody love you so you can't be covered that way. And you, sir, can't even be a father because you're saying, my father wasn't there for me. And so you're using that as an excuse. When you got the power on the inside of you yes. to break generational curses. Yes. You got the power on the inside of you to begin to look at that mirror and every time you want to act up and mess your life up with sin, sin will take you further than you want to go and cost you everything. Sin will take you and leave you. See, I'm telling you something. And all those people that are there riding with you in that car, when you got gas, ain't going to be there when you fall on the ground trying to stabilize what God's shaking you free from because you're so afraid. What if I get out there? I know I'm stepping on some toes, but I'm telling y'all something. One thing that God told me, he said, Kimberly, I'm calling you and you're going to be real talk, Kim. And he said, you ain't got to worry about nobody having you in their church because I'm going to take care of you. You just tell them what I, I'm, you're, 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 you just tell them what I'm telling you to say. Because if you listen, it's a wake up call. Enough is enough yeah. of blaming everybody yeah. and not fixing yourself. Right. Walking into churches, getting in your car and cussing that person out for getting in front of you. Watching porn and ashamed. Come on. So ashamed. Your wife thinks you don't love her. And you don't even realize 
You don't even realize that you got the power to break that mess off you. You don't have to be bound to nothing. Because when God got off of that throne and onto that cross and stretched his arms out wide, he said, for you, it is finished. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. For that sickness, it's finished. For that addiction, it is finished. For that divorce, it is finished. For that molestation, it is finished. For that bankruptcy, it is finished. It's finished. And as of today in this room, it is finished. It's finished. It's finished. It's finished. That generational curse is finished. Those word curses told you all your life, sir, that you'll never amount to nothing, that nobody will ever, you ain't gonna be nothing. Come on, come on. All alive from the pit of hell, it is finished. Y'all gonna be going back to your churches? An explosion's gonna be happening. You're gonna be getting, you're gonna be getting promotions you weren't even in line for. You're gonna be having babies and you've been trying for 15 years and can't get have no baby. Because God just needed you to get out of your way. He said, here's the problem. You have been having all of these things in your life that became projects. And all these projects you've had to keep you from fixing your project. Because the enemy knew that if you ever got this in alignment and begin from in out, all of a sudden you were going to be a voice and the whole world was going to be going, where did she come from? You thought you were invisible thought you didn't matter. And you believe in what people say about you and not what God says about you. There are people in this room that are bestsellers. You got books in you. You got CDs in you. And you still trying to figure out, I don't know how to write a book. You've been picking up every book you can to try to figure out how they wrote their books so you can write your book. No, God said, just start writing the book and I will send people to help you get the book done. But you got, God can't move your feet. There's going to be people in this room, you're going to be married next year. You're like, I don't know how. There ain't nobody in my church. Because God has a way of dropping them from the sky. I'll never forget. I told God, I said, I'm going to give you a year to fix me. He laughed and said, ha ha, five. He took five. He took five. And I was 36 years old. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to be so old. I'm going to be drooping and melting. And who's going to ever love me? And God said, let me deal with that. You get your heart right. You get yourself right. And you want, I'm the God of everything. I'm the God of more than enough. I can do whatever I want to do because I'm the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I've been waiting on you to get out of your own way. I've been waiting on you, boo. I'll never forget, 36 years old. All of a sudden, I'm 40. And I'm like, oh, Lord, on my honeymoon night, God, you better hurry up. It's going to be like. (laughs) And God said, do you trust me or don't you? And I said, well, when you're ready to give me a husband, I'm ready. And, you know, we were really desperate. We started like, ooh. Like it's going to move him. And he's up in heaven going, you done? (laughs) He said, he's ready, but you ain't. I said, what? I've been preaching all over the world. I tell people how to do it. And I ain't ready. He said, you ain't ready. I said, what's wrong? He said, your mouth. I said, that was for the neighbor. That was for loud mouth Susan. <laughs> Yo, I am the girl. Come out! I lay hands on myself about every day. <laughs> Come out! <laughs> Shut up, up, up! I was going down the road. Go out! He was ready. And I was like, whoa! It's been like six years. 
I was like, man, I was already feeling like burly arms. I was like, Jesus, you better hurry. <laughs> Within 10 months, I got my mouth under control and I got the go most gorgeous bow chicka wow wow on the planet. <laughs> And he's bald-headed, and I didn't like bald-headed men. But now I lay on that couch and rub his head. Oh, hubba, 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 hubba. He'll tell me, Kimberly, have I told you how much I love you? Yes, 45 times! But I started watching as I finally got to a place where I wouldn't care no more. If I was at Bloomingdale's for the rest of my life, I was going to praise God. If I was at Bloomingdale's putting makeup on women, I never dreamed in a million years God was going to let me preach all over the world. I'm booked all the way through. I don't even know how long. I'm just booked a lot. And when God said, Kimberly, you can go. And, and there was a lot of people like, what is she? Like, I can prophesy. How's she getting to do it? God trusts me. He's not looking for another prophet. He's looking for a Kim that can get to the heart of people and say, get to your heart. God needs to deal with your heart right now. God needs to get a shift going on in your life. He needs you to get out of his way. He needs you to begin to move your feet. Oh, you've been depressed for a long time. I need you to get up. I need you to get up and move. He, he needs some people that are gonna get in your face and say, I love you enough and I ain't letting you die here. I married that man. And God told me I could quit Bloomingdale's and I ran through Bloomingdale's like that place was on fire. <laughs> Cause I was so afraid God was gonna say, psych! <laughs> I get in there and I hear, we knew you were, it's time. But we wanna tell you something, Kimberly. This store was full of atheists and homosexuals. And we've been watching you. You went from nay nay and on the bar when you were going through your divorce to God resurrected, we watched a God we didn't believe in. Shift a bitter, broken white woman. And we have watched you letting them people come in and out of your office and you would close that door. We knew you were in there praying for them. There has been a revival that started in this place because of your testimony. I said, God, I'm so thankful. For the first time in my life, I didn't get ahead of you. Because to this day, it's only been two years and four months since I walked out of Bloomingdale's and started full-time ministry. That's God. It's all God. But what am I telling you? That I don't care if you're 46, 56, 96, 36. I don't care if you've been stuck at CVS in the well opening boxes. God has not forgotten about you. But the thing that you got to do is you got to stop being mad at the process, stop being mad at the storm, and begin to praise your way through it. Begin to get up in the morning, put your hair back, put your clothes on, and begin to praise your way out. I'm walking out of this. I'm naming this storm. Devil, you're going to wish you would have taken when you could have, because here I come. You got to begin to name that storm and you got to begin to realize the enemy isn't fighting you because you're weak. He's fighting you because you're strong. You wouldn't be in this place if you weren't a game changer. You, I prophesy over you right now that as you go back to your places, the prophetic is gonna follow you. Yes. Doors are gonna be able to open, begin to open that you prayed yes. for for yes. years. Doors that have been stuck. stuck. There are some of you in this room right now and you say, Kimberly, I feel so stuck and I know what you're talking about, but God can't do it for me. Oh yes, he can. Yeah. And he will. Yeah. He's waiting on you to move. He's waiting on you. Say, God, I'm not getting in your way. I don't want it to look like this. I don't even know what I want it to look like. But I know that you're about to take my life. And I'm about to start something in my family 
that ain't nobody ever seen before. There's some of y'all in this place that you have children that are beginning to repeat cycles that are in your family and you haven't taken care of it yet. You better break that mess off. You better find your voice. You better stop playing church and begin to talk to God. I heard the Lord say this morning when I was praying, there's some of you that have been muted. Muted. You, can't, you feel like you, there's water. You can see out, but you can't. You can get everybody else delivered, but you can't get yourself delivered. You keep trying to get up, but you can't break out. You keep trying, you feel like you're drowning. And I hear the Lord saying it's because you keep looking at behind and not ahead. You keep focusing on what you can't do instead of prophesying to yourself, today is the day that I get up and I live again. Today, I'm gonna hear God today because God, I'm not going to sleep until I hear your voice. You ain't forgot about me, God. Because as long as I got a boat, you got a plan. You would have taken me out a long time ago. God hasn't taken his anointing off you, man of God. But I hear in the spirit, there's some women and some men in this place that are numb. And you have not heard from God in a long time. And you feel stuck. And God is saying, we're opening these altars. If you get out of your seat and say, God, as I get up and begin to move, when I tell you the blanket that's going to lift off of you, you're going to bust out of that water. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to bust out. How do you begin to get it again? You be still. You begin to worship and you begin to prophesy to yourself. But something about saying, God, I know recovery is in my future. God's healing marriages in this place. God's giving y'all amnesia. Some things people have said about you, some religion that hadn't loved you. People that have literally wrote you off and never saw good in you and you feel so rejected. They overlooked you like you were nothing and you served and you served and you served. God is saying, I'm about to make up time. Come on. I'm about to make up time. Come on. See, I was going to see how you were going to handle it. I was going to see how you were handling it. I was going to see how you were going to praise your way out of it. I was going to see if you were going to get mad and stay mad. I was going to see if you were going to get up and walk proudly and say, I'm doing this for God and not for you anyway. If you never get an accolade, I'm still going to walk with you, God. Amen, amen. There's some of you in this place, y'all ain't even slept in the same bedroom and you've been married. Woman of God, you got power. When God created Adam, he created Adam because he wanted to. But when he created Eve, he created Eve because he had to. Because when we open our mouth and say something, mountains move. You have a voice. If your house is cold, it's you. You could have had him sleep in that guest room all you want, but all you got to do is go home tonight. When he comes down to get his water. <laughs> when he's getting that ice, you get your finger and just accidentally touch him. Just, just rub him. Ow! It's over. You hold the keys. Wow. Father, I thank you for your presence yes. in this place. Father, I thank you right now that you're releasing mind wars. Huh. 
Y'all, when I tell you that when I got my mouth under control, I can't be mad at nobody. I walked around for my life being so angry. And I remember laying my hands on my chest at night when I had nobody and I would say, Father, I want to forgive, but I don't know how. And I started watching stuff just lift off of me and it wasn't, it wasn't a conference, it was just me and God. Where I put a demand on him and he, I realized he was so gentle. He just, I just wrapped me in his arms. When I had nobody, when the whole world had given up on me, when the whole world was talking about me, God said, live so no one believes and I'll vindicate you. And I start looking now at how God starts vindicating you and how I'm back at the place that I was 25 years ago. I preached for every single person that taught me how to preach in that car. I've stood in their platforms and I've thanked them for being a mentor when they didn't even know it. I live my life getting to love God's favorites back to life. And it's not a job. I'm not in this for the income, but the outcome. Because when you begin to see people free from shackles. So here's what I want y'all to do. You say, Kim, I just, I, I literally just heard God say, Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Y'all better get your journals out because it's about to start fast. You're not going to remember today. You're only going to remember today, the day that you let it go. Because when I tell you the goodness that God's about to bring in your life, and I just hear the Lord say, don't, don't feel unworthy of it. Don't feel guilty for receiving it. He's about to shower so much down on you, you're going to feel guilty. He's about to shower so much goodness and open doors on your life in such a way that you're not even going to feel, you're going to be, be, you're going to feel guilty. Because I said, because I see that you can pass the test. I trust you with my kids. Yes. And he's going to open doors that no man can shut. And when I tell you, you better just break. You thought because the curtain had closed, the production was over. But God said, I had to close the curtain in order to set up for the next scene. See, you thought people had forgotten about you. You thought people had forgotten about you because they ain't checking on you. They ain't texting you. They ain't on your Facebook no more. They blocked you. Oh, but they've been watching you. They've been watching you. And when I tell you what God's about to do, he's got a spotlight shining down on you. You're like, not me. I'm invisible. Oh, no, you're not. Because you came in this place today. He's about to speed up some time. And what I want you to do if you say, Kim, I feel like I've been stuck and I feel like it's a new day for me. And I just want the devil to know, you should have taken me out when you could have. Yes, you should have. I want you just to get out of your seat and just walk down here. If you say, I just feel, I just feel like I wanted to show the devil. I've been stuck. I haven't really prayed. I'm gonna be honest. I feel stuck. My heart feels hardened. I can't even hear God anymore. Feels good, don't it? Grown men, don't, don't it feel good? Big boys do cry. He's softening your heart. 
Oh, you know what you're doing? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask God, God, reveal the hidden places that have kept me stuck. You've been saying for a long time, I'm waiting on God, and God just told me to tell you, you ain't waiting on me, I've been waiting on you. You've been trying to be like everybody else, and God said, I was waiting for you to be okay being yourself. (laughs) We worship you, oh God. Let your presence fill this place. We welcome you, oh God. Come on, just open up. We don't get vulnerable with them anymore, do we? It's easy to shout. But when you got to get vulnerable now. But the vulnerability is where he heals you. We welcome you, oh God. Just lift it. I welcome you, oh God. Come on, open your mouth. Some of y'all ain't heard your voice in a long time. That sweet worship, that's what welcomes him into your presence. I dare you just to tell him, I need. this place. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare breakthrough. I prophesy, I I prophesy a revival flowing in this place. I prophesy healing flowing in this place. God's healing hearts right now. He's healing hearts. You thought your heart would never be put back together. God just said, I'm putting it back together so beautifully. You're going to hear me so clearly. You're about to go on a journey with God. You're about to leave a legacy that the world is going to talk about forever. I want my story, God. I want my story. Tell him. I just heard the Lord say, some of you need to say, I forgive myself some people in here with a lot of shame and religion has made you feel that God just said I got you I love you I'm so proud of you I have called you I have chosen you you are my child when I tell you y'all God is about to bring businesses up in this house we're about to have some millionaires about to have some homeowners. God's kids shouldn't be written. God's kids shouldn't be driving no hoopties. That's right. Come on. Come on. Some of y'all really get it, man. You ain't never going to be the same. The restoration that is about to come in your life is going to shock the world. People wrote you off, but God wrote you on. I just heard the Lord say, the struggle's over. The struggle's over. The struggle's over. It was in your mind. cycles. You keep seeing all those memories. Come on, lay hands on yourself and say, Father, help me renew my mind. Help me know how to renew my mind. Help me. Christians, that's why God has a scripture in the Bible that says renew your mind. But we're not renewing our mind. We're on antidepressants. Come on, renew my mind.
my mind, renew my mind, renew my mind. Come on, come on, come on, woman of God. Come on, sir. Come on, man of God. Come on, man of God. If you're with your spouse, I want you to grab your spouse right now. Hold your, hold your baby. That's it. Come on, y'all, pray for each other. Pray for each other. God's healing some marriages. I see it. I see it. I mean, wrap your arms. Don't you do no church hug. Wrap them up. Wrap them up. You ain't hugged her in a long time. Wrap her up. Oh, my God. I don't care if you can't stand her. Hug her. God's healing you, man. Thank you, Jesus. Man. Man. This is what heaven's gonna look like. I know it is. This is beautiful. Ain't nobody making you do nothing. You're just doing it. You just going after it for yourself. Feels good, don't it? Healing feels good. Healing feels good. And what you're getting right now will never go away. When you really have an experience with God, it don't go away. It ain't bipolar. So, Father, we thank you. Healing's taking place. This is what heaven's gonna look like. When I tell y'all the game changers, y'all gonna be on billboards.